Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're at the Red Iron office and we got some Dell XPS computers in uh, for the Blackfoot Language Revival Project. Today I'm going to show you how to save some money when you buy one of these computers from a manufacturer by upgrading some of the components yourself. Now, arguably, two of the cheapest components you can upgrade yourself are RAM and hard drive space. Another day I'll go into another video about what the difference is between these two and how they impact your computer. When you buy RAM from a manufacturer, it's very expensive. Dell would charge me $250 for each of these sticks. To buy them online is 80 bucks each. And I'll show you just how quick and easy it is to install the RAM yourself. So today we're going to install the RAM on a Dell XPS Special Edition and it's not too scary of a process. So let's go quickly over the things you need to know to upgrade your RAM. My computer has four slots. One is already taken by a memory stick that's 8 gigabytes. I want to increase that as much as possible while staying compatible. To do that, I'm going to add three more sticks to fill the remaining slots. But how do you do that in a way that makes sense? One of the things you have to make sure is that the megahertz matches between all four sticks. The one that's in here is 2666, 2666 megahertz. So are these three sticks. The one that's in here is 8 gigabytes. The three of these are 8 gigabytes as well. RAM does best installed in pairs that are identical. You can have two pairs that are 8 and two pairs that are 16, but typically you kind of want to have everything the same. It maximizes your optimization because then it doesn't have to check and think about things. Um, the flip side of that being, there's another number people don't know about and that's the timing of your RAM. So usually here, like you can see here, it shows the timing is 19, 19, 19, 43. But this RAM is 16, 18, 18, 35. These are going to operate at different timings, which means most motherboards can handle it. It'll probably still work and it'll still be good. It's just you're not optimizing your RAM. So that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and prepare myself so that I don't have static electric shock. To do that, I make sure that I come into contact with something that's well grounded. Um, but there are static equip or static things you can buy that make that better. I showed you this on a previous Dell XPS where you can lift the clips to unlock different things. But this case doesn't come loose in this particular case. And that's because there's a little safety screw holding it in place. So let's go ahead and remove that screw. Da -da. Now we can open the case. So I talked before about these little clips on the back. When they're open, that allows these pieces to come apart. Now I don't want to pull that right out, but if I do that right now, this cable is going to pull on this graphics card and pull it right off of the motherboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for any cables that are overlapping on what I'm about to pull up on and just disconnect it. So that's now disconnected. You can also see where the hard drive is in here and two empty hard drive slots. We're going to pop this open. Go carefully. There's cables back here and metal moving. You don't want to cut a cable. All right. Now down here is where you can see the RAM that needs to go in. Now every manufacturer has different recommendations of what order uh, the RAM needs to be installed in. Typically there is one specific channel they like to use if it's a single slot. It's usually not the second one in. It would usually be the one closest uh, to the CPU based on what I've seen, but it's random. And you see how these are color coded? That's because this is where the matching sticks go um, for their channels. So you want an 8 on here and an 8 on here, but you could put two 16s on the black. Um, but you want to make sure on all four the megahertz matches up, and you want to try to make sure that the timing matches. So let's take a look at what's installed currently. And see how it's 2666 megahertz? That's a match. Now some sticks unfortunately don't list the timing. This is an example of one that doesn't. Um, and unfortunately the only way then to do that is to actually use software on your computer, um, such as SciSoft Sandra, I believe it's called, um, will pull that kind of hardware information. Um, 
but that's something I'll show you guys in another video. So let's go ahead and install the RAM. Now I know that the white needs to match. So I'm going to take the mat RAM I know matches, and I'm going to install that in the two slots. Okay, so the RAM, you'll notice, has a little notch. That notch lines up with a notch in here. In this case, the notch is closer to this side. So you're just going to push open on these little tabs, and they're like little locks. And then you're going to put the RAM in there. There's little guides you got to make sure it fits in, just like that. And then you got to push in to close the clasp. But if you push just one side, it'll sit funny, so you got to do both at the same time. And that'll lock it in. We're going to repeat that for the second stick. Again, keeping it matching so the white matches the white. Now, we're going to venture a guess. We'll put this stick back in and match it with the other one we bought. And you got to go until you hear the click and see them sitting flat. That's it. We've now installed the RAM. At this point, we're going to close the case back up, um, reattach this wire, and plug it back in. If all is well, the bias will come up and may or may not tell you that you have RAM installed, but you want to listen to beeping errors or the system failing to start. If it's got bad RAM or the RAM isn't compatible, it usually won't even get to the BIOS. It'll just turn off right away. So if you have any issues, remove all the RAM and then put one in at a time and try just one stick to see which one is the faulty one one at a time. Just remember to try to keep yourself statically grounded between each stick. Static electricity on this, I've seen actually fry these boards before. Um, so you want to kind of know what you're going to be touching if you want to avoid damage, but Generally, these are meant for consumers to go in and out and remove things. They're meant to be a little bit robust. It's just they're not really good if you have a static spark come from you and go into a piece of circuitry that wasn't expecting it. So now that we got the RAM installed, all we got to do is close it back up. Reattach this. There we go. Now, if afterwards you find that your mother or your graphics card is no longer sitting flat, you may need to open this back up and put a lot of pressure into here to make sure that this sits nice and flush so that you can sit that back up. So from what I remember from this before, these clips have to line up to these little slot spots on here. Those two big ones and this one, they have little arrows, but they should sit. It's a lot easier when you don't flip your lap, your computer on its side. You want to do this standing up. I'm doing it on my side so I can show you what I'm doing. But put that in there. Once it's in there, it'll be flush. And it's done. This is shut. Now before I put that screw back in, I'm probably going to check the RAM and make sure it works. But in this case, I'm pretty confident, so I'll go ahead and put the screw back in. Just be aware, if you made a mistake, you're going to have to reverse this process and adjust the RAM as needed. And that's really it. So now we're going to go ahead and boot it up and test it. So to check that the RAM installed fine, we're going to launch, uh, hit the Windows key, type in system information. You're going to look for installed physical memory, and there you go. We got 32 gigs of RAM.